I just wanted to um, raise a couple of things with you about the world of writing. I don't want to be boring about the world of writing changing so much and all of those debates, but I think <coughs> now the Society of Authors to me is more important than it's ever been in terms of protecting our writers, in terms of looking at the world of literature and writing and what's actually going on. I think it's absolutely vital at the moment. One of the things that's changed, obviously, is the way information is transmitted through the world. And I wanted to ask you both, I wanted to raise the C word, I wanted to talk about courage. And I wanted to talk about women speaking out in public. And Faye, you know, you, you were saying about women leading these silent, desperate lives that no one was writing about. And it feels to me as though it's a time where young women are starting to engage, that there is a great difficulty with women speaking out in public. And I know, Hilary, that you have come across this a couple of times and spoken incredibly wisely about that. But I wonder if you had anything more to say about that. I think when you begin to write at first, you engage yourself uh, with the issue of censorship uh, on two levels. Uh, Self-censorship, what are you permitted to think and say? What dare you say? What kind of a writer dare you become? Um, and it is a real issue. Uh, I have felt this very much as a writer who, whose bent is political uh, and whose work has often been construed as domestic. Uh, you know, it was always extremely clear to me that the person who was political and the household represents the state and so on and so on. Um, but it's not always clear um, to the people who read me in the early days. So there is a, you know, will you allow yourself to be reduced by the expectations of society and your critics and readers? Not so much a question now as it was in the 70s. And then you face another kind of issue of censorship which is people advising you what kind of a writer you should be. Um, the pressure is subtle. It comes from critics who tell you what kind of writer you are and what you're good at and what you're not good at and define a role for you before you know it's happening. Now, if you've worked through that and if you've resisted and if you have broken down your internal censorships, censorship, then it seems to me it's not, it, that it's an easy step then, to speak out in public. Um, but again, you know, I think it takes time to, uh, it, it takes time and experience to get there. You have a certain authority. When you have reached that point in your life, when the undertakers start to look young. <laughs> we hear a great deal about the disadvantages of being a woman over 50, or etc., and how you are supposed to disappear. Um, but, you know, I would say make yourself visible, make yourself audible. Uh, there does come a point where you think, right, what can they do to me? <laughs> and at that point you're released <laughs> so there you go tackle the inner censorship okay. well, well uh, it is <clears throat> I, I mean there are, the pressure of course is will somebody publish my novel and, and that and the publishers want you to publish something that will make them some money and this is a great internal pressure a pressure on women on, you know, if you're writing a novel as to what you're going to write your novel about is there a readership for it out there and these are sort of practical things uh, which you, you sort of have to take notice of the other real problem though I think even more is the self-censorship is wanting to be liked is wanting you know not to people to be prepared to talk to you at a dinner table and not sort of you know even come to the table if you're going to be there because you have said something that is they think inappropriate or, you know, causes some sort of storm of protest because it is taken either the wrong way or there are trolls out there. And so, you know, 
writers tend to, to move very cautiously and not to, not to write what they really think. And this, I think, is, is a real problem, which is why, I mean, so many of the students that I know are writing about alternative universes. They're writing about vampires or, you know, imaginative societies, not the society they're living in, because they're not going to get into trouble. And not want, wanting not to get into trouble really is a real, really, is a, is a real problem. I mean, I, I mean, if you get, I mean, and the e-book also requires, I think, a lot of courage from writers because it's a book without the trimmings. And we're so, since Caxton, we have had, you know, jackets and photos and personalities and all sorts of things that go with the selling of a book or the, the presentation of a book. And if you write an e-book, it's just a sort of naked text with no protection at all. And this, mm. which, I mean, I think it's, I think it's good. I don't, I mean, you know, I think it's rather amazing to think that, you know, it's just raw somehow. And, and that some things have to happen. Can't and you have no up. time for contemplation or thought or, you know, otherwise you're a literary book writer and nobody's going to read you. Mm. So it's a, you know, it's a different matter. But it, it I mean, writing is always, it's always required courage to start it, to bring it to a conclusion. I mean, bringing things to a conclusion. You have also to have to be willing to be misunderstood. Yes, yes. and you mm. don't you don't have to not care all that much what people think of you. Oh yes, which I never did really care much <laughs> because I never <laughs> noticed. <laughs>